In this video, we'll cover 10 questions from the Year 9 2016 NAP plan. Question 4. Amelia wants to find the number of people who are enrolled in either a music class or a drama class, but not both. Which shaded region in the Venn diagram represents the information Amelia is looking for? Okay, so it's saying in either the music class or the drama, drama class, but not both. So let's have a look at this one. This overlap between the music circle and the drama circle represents the students who do both music and drama. So this is not right. This one, for example, represents the people who do both and the people who do music only and the people who do drama only. So that's not what the question is asking for either. This one, everything on the outside, represents those people who don't do music or drama. So that's not what it's asking for either. But here, this one is correct because this shaded part represents those who do music only and this represents those who do drama only. But the people who do both music and drama are not represented because that section in the middle is not shaded. So our answer is this one. Question 10. Riley is building a tabletop in the shape of a parallelogram. What is the perimeter of the tabletop? So this one's quite straightforward. Opposite sides are of equal length, so this is going to be 110 centimeters because this is opposite that side, and this is going to be 90 centimeters. Now we add everything up to get the perimeter. So 110 plus 90 plus 110 plus 90 gives you a total of 400 centimeters. Question 11. The diameter of a red blood cell is 0 0.0076 millimeters. Which of these shows the diameter in scientific notation? Okay, so we need, don't worry about the millimeters here. We just need to represent this number in scientific notation. So let's have a look at the first option. So 10 to the power of negative 3. So in other words, that actually means 1 over 10 to the power of 3. And 10 to the power of 3 is just 10 times 10 times 10. So that becomes 1 over 1,000. So how do we write that? We write that as 0 0.001. And then we multiply by 7.6. So one way we can do this is we ignore all the decimals. So right now, Let's change this to 76 times 1. But we need to remember that in the first one, 1, 2, 3. The decimal goes back 3 places and then the decimal goes back 1 place. So 3 plus 1 gives you 4. So after we get the answer for this, which is just 76, the decimal is now here. Go back 4 places. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the decimal goes here. 0 and 0, fill this part in, and then 0 at the start. And this is exactly what we have here. So the first answer is correct. The other ones you can also test out, but there's no need to because we got it the first time already. So question 18, Vicky and Anya are saving money for a holiday. Vicky has $300 and plans to save $20 each week. Anya has $250 and plans to save $30 each week. After how many weeks will Vicky and Anya have saved the same amount? So it's, it's asking you how many weeks will it take for, for them to reach the same amount. So let's use some algebra here. Vicky, for Vicky it's 300 plus 20 times x x is the number of weeks which we don't know yet and for anya 
it will be 250 plus 30 times x. Again, we don't know what x is equal to. So, after x number of weeks, their amounts will equal will be equal to each other. 20 times x, we can just write as 20x. And the same applies for 30 times x. So that's 30x. Now, let's move, we need to isolate the x. So let's move that to the other side. That will become 30x. Here it's plus 20x, so it will become minus 20x. And then we need to move this to the other side so that 300 stays as it is. And this is an imaginary plus sign in front of it. And when it goes to the other side, it becomes minus. So now we have 30x minus 20x equals to 10x. And 300 minus 250 is equal to 50. We can just change the order. 10x equals to 50x, therefore x will equal to 50 divided by 10, which is equal to 5. So our answer is 5. After 5 weeks, they'll have the same amount. And if you just wanted to double check, if you had 5 here, then the total would be 400. And if you had 5 here, it would be 250 plus 150, which would also give you 400. Okay, next question. A plan of the lawn is in Pat's backyard is shown. Pat wants to fertilize the lawn in her backyard and needs to know the total area. What is the total area of Pat's lawn in square meters? So let's break it up into two shapes. So the square is just nine, three times three, nine meters, three meters times three meters, so nine meters squared. And this part is three. Now we need to figure out, we need to figure out the area of this triangle. So we know that this is 2, so that will be 2 meters. The perpendicular height is 2, and then the base is equal to 3 meters because of this. So 3 meters, uh, 2 meters there, so half times the base times the height, which is the perpendicular height, not the slanting height, remember? So half times the base, which was 3 meters, times the perpendicular height, which was 2 meters. That gives you, so that becomes 2 and 2, they cancel out, so we're left with 3 meters squared. So 3 meters squared plus 9 meters squared, we get 12 meters squared. Next question. Holly is saving to buy her first car. She created a table to keep track of her savings. The number of months is X and amount in Holly's savings account is Y. So complete the rule for the linear relationship between the amount of money in Holly's savings account and that number of months of saving. So something X plus Y equals to something, a particular number times X plus 230. So let's have a look here. First thing we do is we take away 230 from this. And we're left with 80. So 2 times what number gives you 80? Yes, 2 times 40 gives you 80. Now, let's check the other one. Here we take away 230 again. We're left with 200. 5 times 40 gives you 200. And then we can check this one as well. If we take away 230, we'll get 320. 8 times 40 gives you 320. Now the last one, we don't have to check all of them, but let's just do it anyway. 400 is the answer. When you take away 230, 10 times 40 gives you 400. So our answer is 40. 29. Harper has a tablecloth with an area of 3 square meters. What is the area of his tablecloth in square centimeters? So let's say the tablecloth was 3 meters by 1 meter. Since in each meter there is 100 centimeters, we can rewrite this as 300 centimeters and 100 centimeters. So 300 centimeters times 100 centimeters would give you, so first of all 3 times 1 would be 3 
And then how many zeros are there? One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four centimeters squared. Therefore, the answer will be this one. 30. Sam rents a truck from a hire company. The, co the cost to rent the truck is directly proportional to the number of kilometers driven. The rental cost to drive 200 kilometers is $87.50. What is the rental cost to drive 80 kilometers? Okay. So 200 kilometers cost is $87.50. So what is it for 80 kilometers? First of all, let's convert this to 40 kilometers. So to do that, we divide by 5. And then we need to divide by 5 on this side as well. So 87.5 divided by 5. So let's just go through this. The decimal point, let's put that, don't forget to put that in 17.5. So for 40 kilometers, it's 17.5 dollars or 17 dollars and 50 cents. So now we need 80 kilometers to get from 40 to 80. We times by 2 to get from so we need to do the same thing on the other side. So double what's 17 dollars 50 cents times 2. If we do that properly, we will get a total of. $35. So that is our answer. Next one. Mona can walk from home to school with it, uh, following the roads, or she can cut across a vacant block as shown in the diagram below. Along the roads, she walks 600, uh, 600 meters east and 800 meters south. How many meters less does she walk by going across the vacant block? So this is using pi this relates to Pythagoras theorem. So A, B, C. Right angle triangle, this is called the hypotenuse. And the formula is A squared plus B squared equals to C squared. So in this case, A is 600, B is 800, and we don't know what C is. That's what we're trying to figure out. So A squared b squared equals c squared. So 600 squared plus 800 squared is equal to c squared. Therefore, c squared is equal to, so 600 squared is 36,000. So 36, sorry, 360,000 plus 64 then four zeros 640,000 put a comma there a comma there to make it easier so all together that gives you 1 million and then to find c we need to do the square root of 1 million which is 1000 so this is 1,000 meters. So if she takes a longer route, 600 plus 800 is 1,400 meters. But if she takes a shortcut, it will be 1,000 meters. So what's the difference between 1,400 and 1,000? It is 400 meters. And the last question for this video, question 32. This table shows the receiving areas of two large radio telescopes. So for this telescope, it's one square kilometer, and this one, 4,000 square meters. What is the ratio of the receiving area of the ASCAP telescope to the receiving area of the SKA telescope? Okay, so one square kilometer. Let's convert that into meters and figure out what it is. So one square kilometer would simply be one kilometer times one kilometer. We know that in one kilometer there are 1,000 meters. So we do 1,000 meters and 1,000 meters. So if we times these two together, we will get 
1 million meters squared. So we need to change it into meters squared because this is in square meters or the same thing as meters squared. Now we do the ratio of this to this. So ASCAP to SKA. Or in other words, 4,000 to this many. So this is the number we use because it's in square meters to 1 million. Now the zeros, we can cross out three of them here. So we cross out three of them here. Now we're left with 4 and 1,000. The ratio symbol is pretty much a divide sign. So we divide this side by 4 to get 1. We need to divide 1,000 by 4. And if we do that properly, we'll get 250. So our answer is this one. Okay, so that's all for this video. Please feel free to watch my other videos to get more explanations and solutions to questions just like these. All the best.